Supplements aside, what what are some foods that you that you guys think are worth um, prioritizing? Yeah, so we're um, focusing on nutrient dense foods, and oftentimes nutrient dense foods tend to be animal foods, eggs, um, beef. We know that oysters have mm-hmm. um, high zinc, and um, can you eat those if you're what well, if you're pregnant or if you're Preconception, yeah, I mean, yes. Preconception, can, but... yes. I think the jury is out on kind of raw fish and pregnancy. Um, Depends on your doctor. Mine was like, eat it all. As long as it's good quality, you're fine. I yeah. mean, it's consult with your doctor is the right yeah. answer, but yeah. I think there is still more research. That I think it's a done. personal choice. Yeah. I probably personally would, but I wouldn't want to recommend it. And then, you know. Um, what, are, what, are, what is the purported risk? Is that you're going to be exposed to some pathogen, possibly? Yes. Pathogen yes. Yes. When you're pregnant, your immune system is not working You're considered full immune compromise. Mm. And I realize it. When I got sick with my second pregnancy, you get knocked harder than you ever have. And I fully understood why we're considered immune compromised. You're literally building a human and getting sick knocks you out. So I think it's just taking extra precaution. Although the research has come a long way before they were like, ruling out a lot of like basic foods, like sliced meat and all that. You probably still should. But I think you need to figure out with your doctor the right plan for you. It's so interesting, though, because I feel like the like whenever you hear about food being contaminated, risk of E. coli, I mean, mm-hmm. often it's on like Lettuce. leafy greens and Lettuce. things like that, yeah. you know? Cut fruit. Cut fruit. It's rarely yeah. raw fit. I mean, you might get occasional like, you know, food. I eat a lot of sushi. I've never yeah. been food poisoned from sushi. I mean, sushi. you're not eating it out of the back never. of a truck, maybe. Yeah, I'm not eating like quality. supermarket sushi. <laughs> exactly. I think that's just it, quality. In general, it's like, can you move to a cleaner diet? Can you move to organic products, good quality meats? Not all meat is created equal, right? Uh, there was plain steak and there's Wagyu, right? Like, it's the same about the advice we were given. Take a prenatal, they're all the same. Ingredients matter, whether it's your food, whether it's in your supplements. We also really advocate for being your own educated advocate for yourself because the medical system is well-intentioned but uninformed, and we need to know our own body and do what's right for us. Mm. So I think also just going back to the diet, there's the most research around egg and sperm quality and fertility is around the Mediterranean diet. And so that includes protein, colorful veggies, fruits, nuts, seeds, and it's essentially eating kind of how you propose to eat. That's I I, I don't think that in your case I would be like, listen, Max, when you want to have a baby, we, we need to have a talk. No, I think I think you're good. Yeah, I think it's a whole foods diet. Mm-hmm. I think the Mediterranean diet is uh, really, I mean, the way that I now view it, it's more a proxy for a whole foods diet that's yeah. inclusive of both animal source foods and plant whole plants. A hundred percent. You know, I think there's this, uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's poorly d- defined or it's, a, it's defined in a way that to me feels very counterintuitive as like a, a, a grain heavy diet, a low fat diet. The Mediterranean diet is not a low fat diet. No, I mm-hmm. imagine like. And it's, avoc- not a, it's not a low meat diet either. Exactly. Correct. I imagine avocado. I imagine olive oil. Those are good fats that help stabilize your blood sugar yeah. when you eat it with protein and fiber and all of the good things. Exactly. All right. So speaking for the fellas, what are the nutrients that can p- potentially help to optimize sperm quality? Yeah. So the foundation is antioxidants. Um So antioxidants, like we said, like vitamin C, vitamin E, there's so much research on antioxidants improving all sperm parameters because what happens with sperm is they're very sensitive to oxidative stress. And what reverses that oxidative stress or slows down that process is antioxidants. Then we have our kind of hero um, nutrients that supports sperm quality, CoQ10. I'd say in talking to so many doctors out there, fertility doctors, the one that they do talk about a lot is CoQ10. Mm. So I'm so happy to see that because CoQ10 is um, kind of the powerhouse, the powerhouse of the cell and can really drastically improve count, motility, morphology. Because when we're looking at sperm, we're not just looking at the count and how many you have. You want to make sure they're swimming well. You want to make sure they're shaped well. Like they don't have like two two heads. So you're looking at all that stuff. You're also looking at DNA frag- fragmentation. So things like omega-3s really improve with 
DNA fragmentation in sperm. Um, and then folate is another one, B vitamins. Like there was a research uh, study done in 2018 on 30 couples f- uh, and um, 30 couples and um, those 30 couples had four years of infertility. Infertility or pregnancy loss or recurrent miscarriages. And of those 30 couples, they all had the MTHFR genetic mutation. The Both partners, the man and the woman, were given 800 millig- micrograms of folate. And within three months, 13 of those 30 couples conceived. Wow. So that just shows you the power of these nutrients when it comes to egg and sperm health. Um, and we're just like such huge advocates. Mm. But then also with like sperm, there's a lot that you could talk about with sperm that's like, here's where I would have a pep talk with you. <laughs> Please. Let's go. Yeah. A lot of healthy habits for men are not necessarily healthy for sperm. For instance, saunas, heat. Sperm don't like heat. Mm. And there's a reason why they're outside of our body. The testicles are outside of our body. So things like sauna and hot tubs, if you insist and you have to go in there, use an ice pack. I actually think there are brands out there that make ice packs specifically for your balls. Whoa. Yeah. Interesting. That you wear uh, in a sauna? That you like, wear in a sauna. Like if you, you have wanna, to do it. If, you, if you're addicted to sauna and you want to have, there are so many health benefits to sauna, but for your sperm down there. Yeah, for your balls, not, yeah, not no, ideal. Not ideal. Even like boxer briefs or briefs in general, not heat, ideal, right? Yeah, like any type of heat, cell phone in the pocket, your computer on your lap, uh, seat warmers. Um, Should men that are trying to conceive be free, free balling it? I don't know about free balling it, but I would just pay attention to like making sure things are like a little loose. Like if you're sitting all day and things are kind of like, you know, tight over there, yeah. loosen it up. I've always heard you don't want to like put your laptop on your lap. Correct. Yeah, well, that's very true. Because the heat from the laptop. Yep. Not good. Not good. No. And they're wow. very sensitive to every little so he be mindful of temperature yeah are there any ways to test sperm quality? hey if you like that video you need to check out this one here and i'll see you there